Good morning, gorgeous people. It is not an illusion. I am back yet again before 10 a.m. Um, it's your girl, Jen Harris, once more yet again and still with um, my first take for 2020. Now, those of you who follow um, this page and my other social media, one, Happy New Year. Thank you for vibing with me one more year. And uh, let's just dive into it. Uh, one thing that uh, people have been asking me kind of to weigh in about is this whole concept of a writer's room. Now, for those of you who don't necessarily know or are not familiar with the term, a writer's room literally is a group of people in a room who are writing. Now, this is normally seen for people who do screenplays or write for television, plays, or any other uh, media that need um, a certain amount of work and a certain amount of time. Even Shonda Rhimes, my, one of my personal sheroes, has a writer's room. Um, the uh, cast of Misfits, Misfits on, Saturday, on Saturday Night Live, they also have a writer's room. Um, one of the things that you may not know is that Tina Fey used to be the head writer for the writer's room at SNL. And now I believe it's Michael Shea. As problematic as he can be, uh, he still gets he still gets props from me for being the first black man to be the head writer in that particular area. Um, so I am most happy about that. But the one thing that I must admonish you all about uh, this whole writing process is that it's individualistic. You know, you can't a writer cannot. Um, we're strange creatures. We're creatures of habit. We do we do things by which are comfortable accessible and makes sense to us uh for Ty look tyler perry has his own studio he signs his own checks he believes that he has enough talent and enough time to go ahead and crank that amount of work for whatever shows in that amount of time to me that's a lofty goal to me i couldn't do that but again how my talent is set up that's not anything i want to even endeavor into but if he believes he can hey more power to him but the one thing I will admonish you all is this. Again, the uh, goal as writers is to go ahead and create the work. Lay some track, as um, Mother Shonda says. Uh, because for, because again, using, the, using um, the year of yes as my backdrop, what you have to remember is that I didn't, and I didn't know this until I read the book, that television tapes every eight days. So every eight days there needs to be a script, at least for ABC, at least for the shows that Shonda writes for and has created. Every eight days, there needs to be a script. That's a lot of writing to do, especially as one person to do. That's a lot to do in eight days. I don't care how gifted and talented you are. That's a lot to do, especially if you have a show by which is a sitcom that builds, that builds on each other. That's a lot to ask somebody to do alone. But Again, writers are writers are creatures of habit. They do what they do because it's convenient and it's accessible, and they believe that, and they believe that they can. But with that, but with that being said, the one thing that I will admonish you all, who again, y'all know what you get when you come over here. Uh, I'm gonna give you some truth. I'm gonna give you some observation. I'm also gonna give you some fact. The one thing that I would admonish you all who aspire to. A Shonda level, a Shonda level of Shonda Rhimes level of success, or Tyler Perry level of success, is that writers' rooms are a blessing. And I'm sure somebody said, "Well, Jim, what does that mean? If I'm writing, and you said, you know, you always say so writing is like a solo sport. You kind of get in when you want to, kind of pull out when you want to. Yes, it is. But the one thing I wonder, I want you to remember is writing is also not done in a vacuum. The thing that makes writing so potent is when you are able to draw from experiences, not just from people watching, not just from your own vantage point, but from other people. You know, we, we know that Tyler Perry has a formula uh, that he follows for his specific for his specific book, well, not books, for his specific plays and movies. We all know that. Uh, if y'all expected me to come over here, if y'all expected me to bash him because because of how he does that, no. Though I will say the same thing I've always said. He's out here telling stories. He's out here telling stories with a black lens. That I can always get behind. I can always get behind. And I'm sure I'm sure for every great work that he does, somebody else has something else to say. That's just the nature that's just the nature of the beast, that's the nature of the industry. 
However, he's out here being successful and doing what works for him. In my opinion, the one thing that is missing is the vantage point of other people. Again, you as a head writer, you as the creator, the producer, whomever, you always get final say. But the one thing that is, again, a blessing in, in having a collective, a collective group of people who create with you is you can bounce ideas off one another. You can say, OK, I want this character to do to do this. What do you think? Now, yes, the, the character is, is in, inherently mine. I created the concept. I created the show. However, it's not just going to be me watching the show. It's not just going to be me enjoying or partaking in the joys and sorrows of this particular character. Because one of the things that draws people in is if your characters are believable. Can they sympathize with them? Can they empathize with them? Can they see, some, can they see themselves in this particular vantage point? Can they, can they have some kind of social empathy and look, and look this way? Can that happen? So the gift of a writer's room is, again, it's a well of other experiences. It's a well and a wealth of other experiences. So, again, in knowing now what you know about writer's rooms, you can, uh, you can again, take that as a grain of salt or take, that, or take that as gospel. It is up to you. My job is only to give information, right? But the one thing I will admonish you all is that Tyler Perry is out here writing, if you don't like necessarily what he's doing, write your own stuff. If you don't like what Shonda Rhimes is doing, write your own stuff. If you don't like the stuff that I write, write your own stuff. <laughs> you know, writing is a big enough profession by which everybody can do it. The thing is, you know, um, whether or not it's done well is up to the audience. And um, up to the reception of the people by which who want to receive your work. But that goes into reception theory, and I'm going to let y'all do that as a Google search. But writer's rooms are a tool and a coin of the realm. What I think may work for him clearly is not working for him because he's, he's found a clip. He's found something that he likes to do. And this particular thing works for him. Again, writers are creatures of habit. We have our own methods to madnesses that, that we have to negotiate on a day-to-day -day basis. So if he chooses not to have a writer's room for all the projects and stuff that he does, that's fine. That's fine. That, that too, as I'm fond of saying, that too has to be okay. But in, the being, but in the being okay, he's creating. He's creating content. He's offering jobs. He's, he's building out the vision to use to use my the, the my former background, right? He's building out the vision. And he's doing it one word at a time, one show at a time. He's doing that and doing it at a clip clearly that he can handle. Now, could I do it? No. Because by trade, I'm not a playwright. By trade, I don't write for television. By trade, I do, I teach, I blog, I write novels, I write essays, I write poems, I write op-eds. That's what I do. I have found a clip by which works for me. But if I were in that position, and prayerfully, maybe one day I will be, I would like a writer's room because I understand that my, my experiences are not just mine. What does that mean? That means that there are people in this, I'm not, I don't exist on this rock floating around the sun, as my daughter says, by myself. And if I want to include visibility, if my goal is visibility and to provide space and provide voice, I have to take into account that fact. I would want people who don't look like me, but, but at the same time, even though they don't look like me, think like me, they have to respect the vision. That's where, that's where I think sometimes we miss it, especially as writers who want to write um, um, apart from other people, especially in those type of media. That you, that you just create in a vacuum and don't consider anybody else. Now, is that a bad thing? No, but it becomes, but it becomes bad if all that you do is centered around what you have gone through and not being empathetic or sympathetic or even visualizing the world around you. That's when it becomes drivel and tropish and formulaic. What I'm saying is, as much as people try and come for Tyler Perry, I am a fan of his only because... He's out here building, building, telling stories and doing that which he wants to do. 
And that is always awesome. You can't knock that. If you sign a, if you sign your own check, can't nobody fire you. So that is my take on this concept of, of writer's rooms. That is my take on what I believe uh, is needed necessary as far as storytelling is concerned. And also to admonish you all to keep writing. You know, I, I want you all to remember that the stories that you want to tell, as Toni Morrison would say, some are in you. If you see a book that you want to write, you see a, if there's a book you want to read, you might have to write it. If there's a show you want to do, you might have to do it. There, the uh, the advent of having such a data rich, information rich culture is that you can literally start this type of work anytime you want. You don't need anybody's permission to write. As I'm as I'm fond of putting up my own writing quote memes, one of them that I actually had to live by a couple days ago was, "Don't put down your pen for other people's opinions, or don't let other people's opinions define how you pick up your pen." You have to be able to be, cons to be sentient enough in yourself to know that what you're doing is what it is that you want to do. And there is an audience and someone will read it. Someone will appreciate it. And you and this notoriety that you crave will come. But in the meantime, get to work. In the meantime, get to work. Whether that be in a writer's room as an associate writer or a head writer or in a room like Tyler Perry getting cranking out cranking out worlds one word at a time one word at a time but you can do it i believe in you happy writing happy saturday